Hello and welcome to another cool smartphone video. T today we are going to be having a look at the Mizu MX4 Ubuntu edition. As you can see it's booting up here. It is the Ubuntu version. Now the MX4 has been out as an Android device for a bit of time. Um, but what makes this really special is the fact that there is an Ubuntu UI on it. As you can see we are shooting this late into the evening. Um, no sleep for tech bloggers. Let's just get the brightness on this ramped up so we can actually see what's going on while I'm talking you through the UI. And to do that I believe I need to go into the main settings. So this is actually a really good time to show you some of the stuff on the phone. So, um, this is very different from anything you will have used before in the world of Android. Ooh, a little bit too bright there. Okay, you can see the screen is very, very bright, which is good. So we'll just come out of that and we're going to close that down. So this is um, one of many scopes. Now, what scopes are in a nutshell? Scopes are an aggregation of apps, of news services, of email tools, of video tools, photo tools, music tools, things like that. They offer a slightly deeper integration than things like Blinkfeed used to do, and they allow you to use your phone at a glance. Okay, um, so these are some other scopes there. This one I've got turned on for local news. Um, and there's not much going on locally. Um, I've only got it pulling in from the BBC, however you do have options to pull in from loads of other sites. Now, you'll notice that I have no buttons on the home screen as such. There's nothing down here, there's nothing down here. There is a little circle there, which if you double tap it does take you back to your first scope. But I do have, down at the bottom here, you might not be able to see it, there's a little arrow there. If I drag that arrow up, what it allows me to do is it allows me to manage the content of my scopes. So it allows me to put these scopes in and also add some other ones if I want to. So let's add an Engadget one in for example. And I've just added another one, not really sure what that one was. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, but you can see there's loads and loads of them in here and you can even get more from the application store which the icon is up there for. Groovy. So let's go back one. Now, frustratingly, you cannot just tap on the word, you have to actually tap on the arrow, which can get slightly irritating. So if I want to move to the next scope, I drag across at the top, where these dots at the top are. And every time you drag this little arrow icon up, it will allow you to manage the scopes. However, if you want to manage the individual scope, you can tap the settings cog and it will then pull everything in from it. So, let's go over, keep on going, music, I haven't got any music or video on this device. Uh, I'll come back to why later and there hasn't been any new photos taken, there has been some, they're just hiding for some reason. And you've got your YouTube one here, then you've got your Ubuntu store. This is uh, your app store, so to speak. So you don't actually have an app store icon, you have an app store scope. And we'll look back at that in a little bit. And here's the Engadget one. Now, uh, this is actually pulling in from today's edition of Engadget, which is pretty good. Um, I actually find this better than some of the um, Android apps on Engadget, to be fair. Uh, so clicking on it, let's click on the Sony one for example, it will give me a preview of the full story. If I were then to click read more, it will then open the web browser. Now the web browser is based upon the Ubuntu desktop web browser. So it's actually not a bad web browser. And you do have the ability to go into private modes, uh, settings, all that sort of stuff. And your history will be shared. Um, I believe, now I've not been able to test this, but I believe your history will actually be shared to another Ubuntu device if you have one. I don't. So you can see there, as a web browser, it's really not bad. Okay? Um, all the things you would expect work in there. Um, now what I just did there was I actually flicked between the scope. Okay? And I've just gone back to the main one. So if I now flick all the way across, 
you can see there that I've actually gone back into the Engadget uh, web browser. Okay. But I can easily flick between the two scopes, and I'm doing that just by a gesture. Now you can see where things get complicated here. So if I do a gesture from the edge, then it should just rotate between my scopes, but it's actually not. If I do a full one right off the edge and then back in, it actually allows me to go into a multitasking view. However, this should just allow me to flick between them. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If, however, I pull in from this side, I get my app drawer, or the closest thing you could possibly think to an app drawer. Now, this gives me all my frequently used applications. So my phone, my messages, my contacts, settings, camera, gallery, and then web browser. You'll notice there's a little icon there indicating that the web browser is open. If we open up a couple more, so we're going to open the messaging app. And the messaging app is very, very similar to any messaging app you've ever used. You get your conversation view. Your keyboard is very, very usable. This is a 10 finger, 10 finger sensing screen. So um, no issue like I had with the BQ Aquarius E5 that I recently reviewed as well. Uh, much, much fluid, more fluid typing. If you want to uh, delete the text message, you just press and hold it and then you get the option to delete and you can tick and untick as necessary and you can even call the person directly from here or view their contact details. Now the contact details um, are pulled in from either your SIM card, they can be pulled in from Google, um, all very intelligent. Now how do you get out of this? How do you get back again? So you've got two options, you can either swipe in from the side and go to your full multitasking menu. Or you can just do a half swipe and it'll take you back to the scope screen again. Okay, so you can see um, roughly kind of how this is all planned to work. Now these icons here, these are actually dedicated apps. Okay, so you do have a Gmail dedicated app, but when we go into it, look what actually happens. So it'll open Gmail, or at least you think it's opening a Gmail app. What it's actually doing is it's opening a web app. Again, this is not ideal because I have multiple Gmail clients, sorry, accounts. And for me to change between the accounts, I actually have to do it as if I were doing it on a physical computer, which is not really the smoothest way of interfacing with the device. Um, it's not the be-all and end-all, but it's something that did bug me enough to not really want to use this as my main device. Which is a shame, because the hardware on this device is lovely. The fluidity of the software is really good. The battery life is stonkingly good. But there's just a couple, there's a couple of issues with software. There is not that many apps. And then the big one, now this, in my opinion, is absolutely criminal for a flagship these days. If I click on external drives, there's SD card management, which this is a feature of Ubuntu. However, if I were to remove the back cover, and I'm actually gonna do this on camera. So we'll pop this back cover off. And this, it literally is just a plastic back cover. There's absolutely no need for it to be there at all just a flimsy piece of plastic. That was just a SIM adapter. If we look inside the back, you'll see there's your battery, non-removable. There is your camera module, your dual LED flash, and up here, here's your micro SIM slot. Nowhere is there a space to put in a memory card. Okay, now this would be fine if we had a 32 gig memory, a 64 gig memory, something like that. All we've got here is a 16 gig memory device. Now, 16 gig for someone who actually uses their smartphone, as I do, as kind of an office on the go, um, my 
main device for all my communication, uh, for writing on the website, all, all that sort of stuff. 16 gig is not enough. Um, it never will be enough. So I'm a little bit disappointed by that. But if that was fixed and they are still updating the software, there's been an update since I actually uh, have been testing this one. If they were to get that software up to date, then yeah, I, I could see me using this um, more more as a full-time device. They just need to do something with the apps. They need to start bringing native apps instead of what they're doing, which is just your uh, web apps or scopes, because scopes don't really work. Um, some of them are good, some of them aren't, but uh, they're not really the answer. Web apps, come on, it's not 2000 and eight whenever web apps were around on the iPhone um, we need to start seeing native apps on this device so as a quick summary hardware gorgeous shame about the SD card um, don't really understand what was going on there because on BQ Aquarius you've got one um, software needs needs work so that has been a, a very brief overview of the Mizu MX4 Ubuntu edition available to buy from Mizu's website right now. Um, if you like this video, please don't hesitate to like at the bottom here, down here somewhere. If you uh, like to see more of this sort of content, please subscribe over here. And... Um, that's about everything. Uh, keep it glued to CoolSmartphone.com as I will be um, reporting from IFA next week and um, I'm going to be trying to get hands on with all the new shiny stuff as and when it comes out. Thank you very much and good evening. Bye.